Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by today. Yet again, we are here at Eric's. We've got the new media mod in play right now. So hopefully that sound is a lot better for you guys. I don't know if it's gonna hide some background music or not, or not music, but some background noise, yada, yada, yada. But anyways, today we are gonna be changing out Eric's lower radiator hose. And we are gonna look at his upper. We might change that as well, cause he did buy one just because it was cheap and it came with the kit. Um, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead, change that out because his does have a bulge in it and I'll explain that bulge in a little bit, exactly what happened and how that happens and why you should check yours and make sure you don't have that same exact thing because it could leave you stranded on the road and you don't wanna do that. So with that being said, make sure you go ahead, hit that like button and that subscribe button. Please, please, please hit that bell button so you get those notifications and let's just get into it. What we have here is we have the lower hose and then the upper hose. The upper hose only cost him like $25 and we figured, you know what, why not? Let's go ahead and get that replaced while we're doing it because we're gonna have everything, all the cool and drained anyways. I will link these parts below for you guys, but I do wanna make sure and cover this real quick. You need to make sure you have enough concentrate and you need to not make sure you have enough distilled water. The reason you wanna have distilled water is because you don't wanna have any type of minerals or anything like that that can get into your system and corrode your system away. That is highly important. I wanna make sure you guys understand that, that if you are gonna do a concentrate with the concentrate is a lot cheaper to do than the 50-50 blend because the 50-50 blend is more so when you need to top your coolant off or say you only replace your upper hose or you do your thermostats or you change your coolant tank, that kind of stuff. But when you're completely draining the system, get distilled water, get the concentrate, it's gonna be a lot cheaper and make sure it is distilled. I cannot express how important the distilled water is to this system because Corrosion happens within your system, and I can tell you that right now, it, it, certainly, it certainly happens. You don't think it will, but it does. Corrosion is a real thing in your cooling system, so make sure you get distilled water. All right, so the first thing you gotta do here is we just did it. We took our front skid plate off here, enable so we can access this uh, wonderful, beautiful lower radiator hose. That's leaking. It's leaking, look at that. Oh, sure enough. Look at that right yeah, there. Yeah, good thing we did this. All right, so if I can get a better camera angle for you guys, you can see that this hose is leaking. Oh, squirt, squirt, skeet, skeet. So that's the main reason why we're taking care of this today. One thing I did forget to mention is uh, we took the upper radiator cap off the uh, reservoir. Make sure you do that before you jack your chuck up or if you're doing this on the ground, make sure you take that off first. Enable for the air to flow through when you're bleeding this out or draining this out. And then we're gonna go ahead, after we took that skid plate off, we're now gonna take the rear, the front wheel well liner off so that we gain access to where we're gonna drain this fluid out because it's gonna get messy. All right, let me get you a better lighting here, you guys. There we go, right there. All right, so right here, this is where we're gonna start our draining our fluid. We're gonna pull this off. There was a little clip in here that we took apart that I completely forgot to record. I'm sorry, you guys, but it's just a simple clip. Just pull it apart and it'll come right off for you guys. We're gonna pull that out and it's gonna drain. All right, so I wanna show you guys real quick. All we're doing is we're taking, a good, all we're doing is we're taking a flat blade screwdriver here. As you can see, it's already starting to drip on us and we're just kind of wiggling it out just like this. As you can see, it's starting to slowly drain. And I can tell you guys, you're not gonna wanna pull it all the way off when you're doing this because it is just gonna flow out if you pull it all the way off. So just kind of wiggle it off, let it slowly drain out. And so you can control it with your bucket so it doesn't go absolutely everywhere. All right, so now that we got this far, we're also going to do a little bit differently here than what normal guys do, is we're actually going to cut the bottom of this hose because we've drained pretty much all of it out to this point, but if you think about it, your lowest point is gonna be the bottom of this hose and we need to take this off. So that's technically still filled with coolant. So we gotta get that out and we're just gonna cut it because we're gonna replace it anyways. All right, so next step, now that we got that done, we're gonna go ahead and pull the, the, the hose off of the reservoir, the very bottom of the reservoir here. There we go. Beautiful. There's one, yeah. See, if you look, you can't spin the clips because they're they're held on. Um, so we're gonna have to break that off and reuse these clamps once we get the new holes put in. All right, so next step, we gotta get our bucket out of there. We're gonna drop the truck back down because we then have to take the hose off of the heater core that's up on top of the truck. We'll do that next and we'll show you guys that soon. 
The next step we're gonna have to do and able to access the next hose, we're gonna have to take this off. Uh, we took the uh, mass, flow, mass airflow sensor, just the wire off of it. We don't wanna mess with the actual mass airflow sensor because these are expensive. And then you just have this clamp here. We've already loosened that and then you go ahead and just take it out. All it does, it rests in there. And now we can get access to the other hose, which is down in here, right there. That hose, and you can see that one's leaking as well. So these hoses just in general are definitely due to be replaced on Eric's truck. All right, so if you guys see up in here, right up in there, all the way up in there, it's not gonna be fun to get at. Um, <laughs> oh man, that is probably I think an eight millimeter and it's just a regular hose clamp. You're gonna have to get that undone and able to take the rest of this remaining hose out. Two hours later. Listen here, kids. Listen. Oh, videos you watch. Probably ain't gonna show you this because the, the hose coming out of that water <laughs> sucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would 100% I would say if you were doing this from your driveway, like if I was doing it from my driveway, I'd. I'd four hours. Okay, four hours. Okay. Game time? Game time. Here we go. Oh! A half an hour later. <laughs> All right, so we finally got it out. Um, the hose that went into, that came from your, the bottom of your water pump, that was an absolute pain. What we did is we ended up cutting it a little bit here. If you can see that, we cut it and uh, it, it was a pain. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. Don't get frustrated with it. Just take your time, cut it, cut it away because you gotta imagine this has been there a very long time. So it's pretty much almost seized to the bottom of your water pump. Now keep in mind, the new holes that we got are specifically, I don't know if say you get a PPE one or an OEM one, but this is a Gates one and I'll leave it linked below for you guys. You need to reuse your factory clips that you got. The only clip that they're going to give you is that lower one right here. Other than that, you, if you want to maintain the factory routing, you got to take this clip off here, this clip. You need to use the clip for connecting for your heater core and the clip that will connect to the bottom of your reservoir tank. So like I said, we're going to go ahead, get the new one installed, and after that, we're gonna exactly talk about what happened with this little bulge because it's very important. And I think you guys might wanna check yours in case, especially if you've had leaky transmission lines. So we'll go ahead and talk about that after we get the new one installed. That was dumb. Tell me, bro, this is a stupid job. It's easy, yeah. but it's stupid. Yeah. All right, so a little update. We finally got it up in there. Pretty stupid, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It's a very, like Eric said, it's a very easy job, but it's just really stupid. Uh, Take your time, be tedious, be patient with it, be careful with your holes, make sure you don't damage it. When you slide it up in there, you're gonna have trouble with the idler arm. Um, well, the idler arm brace, you could say. That's where there's gonna be a little bit of trouble. So just keep in mind, be patient with it, make work your magic, try different ways to try to get it up in there. Everyone's gonna shove it up in there a little bit differently, which is... <laughs> um, but anyways, now we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna get this hose connected up here to the coolant reservoir. Now this hose back here, right here, is going to now get connected to the heater core line, which is right here. And then we'll go ahead, connect it back to the radiator, hop underneath the truck, connect it back up to the bottom of the water pump, and drop it down and start filling it with coolant. All right, so I'm able to get the heater core one on. Um, just letting you guys know, you're going to want to at least get the end with the water pump at least get the holes lined up and on there, not cr clamped down necessarily, and able to get the length for the heater core one. That way you can properly get it all installed the proper way, and it slides on a lot easier than it takes off, you guys. Keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Understatement. Yeah. Install is way easier than the removal. Like, ass backwards of how stuff tends to work. Wow, that was way better. So now Eric should be able to reach his heater core holes a lot better because we were running into before there, get a better view for you guys. We were running into before where it wasn't long enough and we really had to stretch it. Now it's a lot closer. All right, so now we got it all taken care of. We're gonna go ahead, get this hose clamp up in there and tighten down. 
Now I'm personally using a eight millimeter ratcheting wrench. I kind of have skinny hands so I can fit my hands up in there a lot easier and use this. You can use a ratchet as well if you want to. You'll need to use a shallow socket. I'm not gonna be able to film this just because I can't get a camera up in there, even the small GoPro. So we'll see you in a little bit. I'm gonna mention a little tip here for you guys with my eight millimeter wrench. Underneath here, I went up through here, kind of like this, and stuck my hand, there we go, better light. I went up through here, stuck my hand through the back side of your center link, and you can see my wrench right here. And then I was able to, now this way, I was able to then this way, get my hand up in here, and get my wrench on there like this. Again, so I'm up in here, got my wrench on the strap up there, I'm through here, and I've got my arm through about through here. I don't know if you guys can see or not, but it's a little tip for you guys, and then we'll get that ratchet in there. It was very simple, actually, once I figured that out, because simply then I just cranked it one way, flipped the wrench around, cranked it another way, flipped the wrench around, you know, constantly back and forth, back and forth like that. A lot easier to put that on that way than what we did to take it off. So a little tip for you guys, if you're still sticking around to this point in the video, that's gonna help you out a lot. And by the way, if you don't have your fan shroud, this whole project is gonna be way easier. On my truck, if it was on mine, it'd be a lot easier because the brackets we're dealing with that are in the way of a lot of this stuff is the brackets for the fan shroud. So if you don't have your fan shroud, this is gonna be a lot easier for you. All right, so we got our first jug of 50-50 in here. Now we're gonna go ahead, we did it in a bucket first, a nice clean Home, Home Depot bucket with a very clean funnel, very important to be clean. Then now we are going to be able to use the jugs individually and mix them like that. But first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our oil filler off next because we need to access the bleeder screw for the thermostat. And the reason why you do that is simply because you're not gonna be able to just bleed out all the air if you're pouring it only into your coolant reservoir just because you have no way out for the air. So doing this is gonna make it a lot easier and a lot faster. What Eric's doing here is he is filling up one of the empty jugs halfway and then we're gonna fill up a water jug the other half of the way. Now the reason why we're doing this is simply because if we don't need, teepers, bless you. If we don't need all of this to be done, like if we don't need all these jugs, I should say, I don't know, it's been a long day. If we don't need all these jugs, we wanna make sure that we have the right mixture. You know, some people I know will just pour it in, pour the water and then pour the concentrate in, pour the water in. Personally, I'd advise you to make sure you mix it before you pour it into the truck. So as you see here, he used both jugs 50-50 in each jug, poured 50% of the concentrate in one jug, the empty jug, and then just split the water in between the two is what we ended up doing here. It's gonna be a lot easier and able for us to pour this back into the truck. Again, like I said, make sure you crack that bleeder screw. We took it out all the way. We took that bleeder screw out all the way, if you can see it down in here. Uh, not the best light for you guys, but we took it all the way. Now Eric can just fill it up without the funnel, make life a lot easier. Now I am also, while he's filling it up, I am also watching the bleeder screw down at the bottom of the screen there to make sure we watch that we're not overfilling it. Um, that way we can start bleeding the actual points because once it gets to the thermostat housing, that's when we will start putting the bleeder screw back on. All right, so we're good here now. I kind of messed up. I really wanted to show you guys something. We're full over here. Um, what we did here is I squeezed this hose. Once I squeezed it, Eric put his finger over the hole to hold it down. And once I released it, then it pulled all the, fl pulled the fluid that we needed or the coolant that we needed out of the reservoir through the system. He let go. He let air back into it. I squeezed it. He put his finger over that hole, it filled it up more, and then finally it took maybe three times to do that. Once we noticed that our coolant was full all the way, we did that a few times, and then it filled up the thermostat housing, and we've got fluid in here that I'll show you just a little bit. I'll drain, I'll squeeze it. So you can see right there, I'm squeezing it right now, and I'm pulsing it. So this way we've got absolutely everything in here. We've got all the new coolant that we needed. We definitely didn't need this much coolant. So I'll show you guys in a little bit how many cans 
or gallons of Dex Cool we used. I'll link all this below for you. I'll link the Dex Cool, cool for you, the concentrate. I'll even link the distilled water for you guys. I'll link the hose kit that I used. Everything that we used in this video will be linked, obviously besides the tools. Um, I'm even gonna put my camera equipment up on here now too because I do have a media mod and stuff like that. So for those of you that do want to know what I use, I'll use that. I'll put that in there for you guys as well. But that being, we're gonna go ahead Put the cap on, put the bleeder screw back on, start the truck up and look for leaks. All right, so we put the um, inner, no, not the intercooler, my goodness, it's been a long day. We put the uh, air intake back on. Again, it's really simple. We started it up. Check for leaks. We ended up replacing this upper radiator hose right here. So we checked for leaks here first and we got checked for leaks underneath. No leaks in here. We got no leaks down in here. Check down by the water pump next. It looks like we have nothing leaking down there. Now one thing I will say we like to do is we like to go around with a little flashlight instead of a big one. So that way we can focus, once we get it up in here in the lift, we can focus more on the parts that we replaced. We can really inspect everything that we did. Obviously you then have to differentiate what the coolant is that we took out, the coolant that dripped all over the frame. But realistically, it should be fairly easy because the new coolant, you will see, if it was leaking, it would be dripping down this hose. So thankfully, we've got nothing dripping down the hose. We've got no leaks. Everything looks really good. I'm excited for this. This is something that we actually ran into when we did our transmission lines. Now, the reason why we ran into it when we did our transmission lines is transmission fluid is actually really bad for hoses like this. And actually, what happened was the transmission fluid got on the hose and caused it to bubble up like that. Now, it also could be a little bit of heat but it didn't really look like that. It looked like more of a chemical reaction. Um, and, and if plumbers and electricians are here, we know that there's a chemical reaction with different plastics. And the plastics are simply as, uh, we don't deal with a lot, but Romex, for instance. A specific type of Romex, when it touches the wrong type of PVC, will actually burn a hole through the PVC. Just simply a plastic touching plastic. So it does the same kind of thing when it comes to the transmission fluid. The transmission fluid is really bad for your hoses, so keep that in mind. When you do your transmission fluid, you don't want to drip it all over the place. So the transmission fluid caused that bubble, which then caused a small, small, probably fracture in the hose itself, which is then why it went all the way through the hose and caused it to leak. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button. If you are subscribed, please hit that bell button so you get those notifications. This was a fun one, kind of a pain in the A, but you know what? It was something that had to be done in case you don't want to get stranded on the side of the road with your coolant leaking all over the place. Because if you haven't been there before, I know somebody that has, and it is not fun by any means. So have yourselves a great night, have yourselves a great weekend, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, so I forgot to completely mention this for you guys. We ended up buying, so Eric bought four jugs. We actually only ended up using two jugs of the concentrate. So keep that in mind um, versus price point. That will save you a lot of money because I'd say he's probably almost $100 in just the four jugs. He only needed two, so he's going to actually take these two back uh, and get some money back as well as some leftover transmission fluid we had. We can go ahead and take that back as well. So he's got, luckily, I'd say he's probably got close to $60, $70 sitting in this bucket right here in this box. Get a nice little return for what we ended up using and not using. So keep, keep that in mind, you guys. You'll need two jugs of Prestone antifreeze coolant, concentrate, and distilled water. Have a good night.